Hi, this is a video from the Science Hive on photosynthesis for A-level biology. So first things first, let's have a look at the overall equation for photosynthesis. You can see that uh, we're reacting carbon dioxide and water together. That carbon dioxide just comes from the air, so it's going to move into the leaf through the stomata uh, by simple diffusion. The water will move into the plant through the roots, it's going to be absorbed from the soil. And when those two things react together, the plant is going to generate glucose. And this is basically the plant's food source. So this, this whole process of photosynthesis is to create food for the plant or glucose. Um, so it's just basically instead of eating, um, this is the process that it's carrying out. You need to know what happens to that glucose, and there's three things that could happen. One, it could be respired to generate energy in the form of ATP. So if it needs energy straight away, that's something that could happen. The second thing um, is that it could be stored. And because we're dealing with plants, it's going to be stored as the energy storage molecule in plants, which is starch. Remember, the energy storage compound in humans is glycogen. The third thing that could happen is that it could be converted into other molecules. So things like lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, all the things that uh, the plant cell needs. The second product is oxygen. Um, that's going to be released out of the plant through the stomata. So where does all of this take place? Well, it's in these uh, organelles called chloroplasts that you find in plant cells. Uh, you need to know the structure of a chloroplast. So you should, you can probably see from the diagram we've got a double membrane. So we've got an outer membrane and an inner membrane, which I'll label here. So this can be the inner membrane. And we'll label the, this bit outer membrane. We've got some goopy stuff in the middle called the stroma. And you can see here these like little pancake structures. So each stack of pancakes we call a gran granum for a singular, grana for plural. It's messy. But anyway, so we've got granum is a whole stack of pancakes. Each individual pancake is called a thylakoid. Thylakoid. Okay. And the things that connect them are called lamella. So a lamella will be a singular one. Lamellae is plural. Okay. So the, yeah, that's the structure of the chloroplast. Um, We've just seen the overall equation for photosynthesis. And if you're using this, this video for revision, you probably know already that um, the actual reactions are a lot more complicated than what we see in the overall equation. And um, maybe you know that in actual fact, photosynthesis is divided into two reactions. So the first reaction is called the light dependent reaction. I'll simplify that as LDR. And it's called that because it requires light energy. And then we've got the light independent reaction, which doesn't require light energy. The whole purpose of the light dependent reaction is to generate the things that we need in the light independent reaction. It's going to generate something called NADPH, which is an electron carrier. And it's also going to generate ATP, the energy molecule. Now, the light dependent reaction takes place on the thylakoid membranes right. so
so basically what I've pointed to here, so this and here and here are basically where the uh, light independent reaction is going to take place. Now, maybe this kind of shows you why we've got these, these big stacks of pancakes. It's creating loads of surface area to have um, for the light dependent reaction to happen. The second reaction, the light independent reaction, takes place in that goopy stuff in the middle of the stroma. So all the, um, the photosynthetic enzymes and substrates that we need for the light independent reaction are going to be concentrated in the stroma there. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the thylakoid membrane, so the membrane of one of those individual pancakes. Um, we're going to talk about what happens in the light dependent reaction. Oops. So, uh, so the first thing that happens is that uh, light energy is absorbed by one of these photosystems. So what you're what you're seeing in green is something called a photosystem, which contains the chlorophyll pigment. It's a little bit confusing because photosystem Photosystem 2 comes first. So photosystem 2, you can see here, photosystem 1 is further along and, and is involved, kind of like second. But photosystem 2 was, was discovered first, which was why, sorry, photosystem 1 was discovered first, which was why it was named photosystem 1. But photosystem 2 is involved first in the light dependent reaction. So photosystem 2 absorbs light energy and the chlorophyll pigment that it contains absorbs light with a wavelength of 680 nanometers, which is why it says P680 over here. When that happens, the light energy excites an electron into a high energy state. And that high energy electron passes down something called the electron transport chain, which is what you can see in blue. So the electron transport chain is made up of a series of electron carriers, which transfer this electron um, you know, along the membrane. As the electron moves along the electron transport chain, it loses energy. So it goes from a high energy state to a low energy state. That energy isn't lost, it's used by the electron carriers to pump, protein, uh, to pump protons from the stroma into the lumen of the thylakoid. So they, they have like a dual function, if you like. They can act as electron carriers and proton pumps. So you're going to have hydrogen ions moving from the stroma and accumulating in the lumen, creating something called a proton gradient. We'll come back to that in a second. Once the electron is finished moving along the electron transport chain, it is, it's passed on to the second photosystem, which is called photosystem one. And the same thing happens again. So light energy is absorbed by photosystem one. It, and it, it absorbs light energy with a wavelength of 700 nanometers. And it excites an electron, which is passed onto an electron carrier. And then finally, onto a molecule called NADP. NADP is um, an, another type of electron carrier. It's used by the cell to ferry electrons from one place to another. And that creates something called reduced NADP, or NADPH. It's the same thing. Um, remember from GCSE chemistry that reduction is the gain of electrons. So when we're talking about NADP being reduced to NADPH, all we're saying is that it's gained an electron. So that's one of our products of the light dependent reaction, NADPH. The other product is ATP, and that's generated using this proton gradient that we were just talking about. So we've got a high concentration of protons in the lumen of the thylakoid, a low concentration of protons in the stroma, and ATP synthase kind of has a, um, has a channel that protons can move through. So they're going to move through the enzyme down their electrochemical gradient. And that process is called chemiosmosis. 
the movement of protons through the enzyme turns the end that you can see this 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 bit of the enzyme here is kind of like a rotor so chemiosmosis drives the movement of atp synthase and allows the phosphorylation of adp into atp and that's how we're creating our second light dependent reaction product the last thing to talk about with this reaction is is what's happening over here so we've lost an electron from photosystem 2 we've got to replace it and that comes from water remember water was in the overall equation for photosynthesis what happens is that the light energy is also being used to split water apart into three things it's going to split it into oxygen protons and electrons those electrons can be used to replace the electrons that have been lost from photosystem 2 if that didn't happen then more you know the light dependent reaction can't continue uh, the protons can be used uh, to contribute to that proton gradient that we have in the lumen. And the oxygen is a product of photosynthesis. So that's where our oxygen comes from. So the light independent reaction is also called the Calvin cycle. And it looks like this. So what happens is that, uh, or actually we can break it down into three stages. So the first stage, I'll write it over here, is called carbon fixation. Fixation just means sticking carbon in a bigger molecule. And it's catalyzed by this enzyme Rubisco that you can see over here. So Rubisco is going to take carbon dioxide, the molecule that was um, absorbed by plants through the stomata, and it's going to um, attach it into this 5-carbon molecule called ribulose bisphosphate. By doing that, it's fixed the carbon within a 6-carbon molecule. You don't need to know the name of that 6-carbon molecule. You do need to know that it's unstable, so it immediately breaks down into two lots of a 3-carbon molecule called glycerate 3-phosphate, or GP for short. Okay, so that's carbon fixation. The second part of the Kelvin cycle is reduction. Okay, so those glycerate uh, three phosphate molecules are being reduced into a different kind of molecule called glyceraldehyde three phosphate or GALP. Um, so GP is reduced to GALP, which basically means it's accepting electrons. Where are those electrons coming from? From our electron carrier that we generated in the light dependent reaction. So NADPH is going to be oxidized back into NADP. The other thing that it requires is energy. So remember that we also generated ATP in the light dependent reaction. So both NADPH and ATP are used in this conversion of GP into, into GALP. It's worth bearing in mind, because maybe you call it something different at school, um, GALP also goes by the name of triose phosphate. So maybe you've seen it like that in textbooks. But it's the same thing. So GP to TP uh, requires reduction using um, NADPH and ATP. The GALP then can be siphoned off, and that's how glucose is made. Um, to generate glucose, though, uh, we need six turns of the Calvin cycle. So remember, glucose is a six-carbon molecule. For every turn of the Calvin cycle, we can siphon off one carbon because we're going to regenerate this five carbon molecule called ribulose bisphosphate. So every time it turns, we can take a, take a carbon off GALP and, or TP and uh, use it to create glucose, which means that we need to go six times around to create one glucose molecule. 
we could make glucose and then we could convert that glucose into other things like we mentioned before lipids amino acids nucleic acids okay uh the other five carbons of GALP are going to be reconverted or recycled back into ribulose bisphosphate rubp that conversion requires energy so we're hydrolyzing atp into nadp sorry <laughs> into adp uh now we've generated now we've regenerated ribulose bisphosphate we can continue the cycle oh so i should say that the third step was a uh, regeneration of our EBP. Okay, so yeah, the three the three stages of the carbon cycle: carbon fixation, so sticking carbon uh, sticking carbon dioxide into ribulose bisphosphate to create the six carbon molecule, which is catalyzed by the photosynthetic enzyme Rubisco. Then reduction of glycerate phosphate into triose phosphate or GALP using the products of the light dependent reaction. GALP can be converted into glucose once you've done six turns of the Calvin cycle. The rest will be used to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate, um, a process which requires ATP, and then the cycle can continue. And that's everything. Um, I hope this video is useful. Um, please, um, Please check out other resources. There's loads of stuff online for A-level biology and there'll be more videos to come. So thank you for watching.